Hi everyone, welcome to church. I'm Katie Yons and I'm the pastor at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Please check out our announcements and if you're watching live, connect with others in the chat or the comments. You can also check out stpetersverona.org to connect with us and we would love to hear from you. And now I invite you to gather your hearts and your minds for worship. Pastor Katie Yans from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York. This worship service is for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, July 5th, uh, 2020. And I hope you're all having a great 4th of July weekend if you live in the U.S. Uh, you will probably notice that this service was pre-recorded instead of being done mostly live like past Sundays. We're just trying something new, so thanks for your understanding. But thank you mostly for joining us for worship and for being the church wherever you are. In this season after Pentecost, our tradition is to begin worship with a moment of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, 
whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Lord, we confess to you all the ways we fail to trust your presence with us. We hope only in ourselves. We fail to believe that you have provided enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our benefit. We fear those who are different from us, and we sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you with new lives. Amen. Beloved, God has made peace with us through Jesus Christ. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to sing along with Scott now for our gathering hymn today, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Scott. Great hymn to start off our, our worship on this 4th of July weekend. And now let us pray. You are great, O oh God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for our readings 
Our first reading today is from the 145th Psalm, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and, and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, it's time for the children's message. So kids, I hope you're doing well out there. And I would like to start by talking about something or someone called Flat Jesus. You might have seen Flat Jesus mentioned in the newsletter or in the announcements before this service, but I haven't really talked about him yet to you. But Flat Jesus is basically a paper Jesus that you can cut out and color. And then as you go places and do things this summer, I would love it if you took Flat Jesus with you and then you took a picture of him wherever you happen to be. Uh, here's a good example. Russ is going to put up a picture. Uh, the, this is the first Flat Jesus picture that I've gotten this summer, actually. This picture is from Jennifer and Paul Ligon. I'm not sure if I'm saying their last name right. But as you can see, they took Flat Jesus kayaking with them. So Flat Jesus looks pretty relaxed here. And this is a beautiful place to be. So if you go somewhere like this, you could take a picture of Flat Jesus there too. Or maybe if you're doing something at home, or in the car, or something else around here, you could take a picture of Flat Jesus there. So you can send them to me, and it will be very cool for all of us to see where Flat Jesus goes this summer. Okay, now I want to shift a little bit into talking about the gospel that I just read, because it's a little confusing, and I'll get more into it in a little bit, but right now I just want to focus on the last part. I think the last part is something we really need to hear right now. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Even just hearing those words, even just saying them again helps me to take a deep breath and feel like 
everything is going to be okay. There's one word in here that I want to make sure that you know, and that is the word yolk, because this is not referring to an egg yolk, okay? It sounds like that, but it's very different. So let's see if Russ can maybe put up a picture of a yolk so you can see one and see what it's like. You can see yolk is something that goes over the necks or around the necks of farm animals and it connects them so they're yoked together. And when they're yoked together, they can do their work as farm animals. So maybe they're plowing a field or maybe they're pulling a cart or they're pulling something else that's heavy and they have to put on the yolk to get ready to do the work. Although in this case, and the humans are the ones putting the yoke on the animals, but it's something they have, to, they have to put on to do the work. So maybe you can think of some other things that people have to put on to get ready to do their work. So for example, doctors put on a white coat or maybe hospital scrubs to get ready to do their work, right? Get ready to treat their patients. Construction workers put on a hard hat or an orange vest or both to get ready to build things. I put on a clergy collar to get ready to lead worship. Farmers might put on their work boots. Some people put on a suit, right? All different things. And I remember actually, this was a couple years ago, we had a service where we invited people to bring stuff like that. They had a Sunday and this is a few years back. And Julie Steele brought a calculator. She doesn't put on a calculator, but she brought it because that's something that gets her ready to do her work, right? It's some, she has an accounting job where she does a lot of math. So every job has something like this. And everyone has some kind of yoke, right? Part of growing up and going to school is figuring out which yoke is right for you. If you wear a yoke that doesn't fit you, a yoke that's not the right one for you, it's not gonna feel good. It might give you a blister, it might hurt you, right? Maybe not a literal blister, but it might not feel very good. It might be hard to do your work, but if you find a yoke that fits you, it will be a lot easier to do that kind of work, right? And I don't just mean like finding clothes, the right clothes that literally fits you. It's finding the job that fits you, finding the thing to do that actually fits you. And here Jesus is saying that he has the right yoke to fit you. If we are really doing Jesus's work, it will be easier and lighter and better for our bodies and our souls. It will still be work, don't get me wrong, but if we are wearing Jesus's yoke, it will be joyful work that helps us live. All right, let's pray now. You can, I'll say a phrase and you can repeat it after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us your yoke. Help us to do your work and lean on you for help. Amen. All right, we continue with our hymn of the day, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's going to be led by Scott and the choir at New London Methodist. This is a video from a few years ago. So thank you.
Thank you, Scott. And thank you, choir from New London Methodist. Thank you so much. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I spent a long time this week looking for and trying to think of a good story about a misunderstanding to open up this sermon. Finally, I gave up because there were just too many choices. Misunderstanding is everywhere in our stories, our plot lines, our works of literature. You can look at the book of Genesis, look at the whole Bible really, but look in Genesis, you could look at the comedy and the tragedy of Greek and Roman playwrights. You can look at Shakespeare. You can look at 90% of movies today and 99% of sitcoms today out there. Misunderstandings are just one of the most common plot devices that we have, that we use, no matter the time in history, and I'm going to say no matter the culture. There may be cultures where misunderstanding is not a big deal, but I'm, I, my guess is that misunderstanding, that it's in every culture. Because we all know what it feels like to be misunderstood. We all know that it's not a pleasant experience. And in some ways, I think right now, we are feeling that way more than ever. As the connections between people have been tried and tested and maybe stretched and stressed and maybe a little frayed during this pandemic, understanding is at risk of breaking down. It takes an, enor an enormous amount of effort to express yourself and be clear about yourself, even when others, maybe even others who know you fairly well, put their own assumptions on you, right? They may look at what you have done and, and make certain assumptions about you, right? You, you went to a march for justice, so you must think this way. You said a prayer for the police, so you must believe this. You made a comment about something the other day, so you must be one of those people. You look different than I do, so you must be this or that, or you must have this or that. I'm sure you can fill in the blank. As our brains are overloaded with the anxiety that pervades our world right now, and especially our nation, we don't have the coping mechanisms that we used to. We don't have the cushion or the spacious margins in our life right now to absorb the bumps that happen in life, the bumps that are bound to happen. And the result is that life feels like we're riding in a vehicle without shock absorbers, where we are jostled and thrown about, and in the process, we knock each other over. I don't know if that was exactly the place where Jesus and his audience found themselves in our gospel reading today. But I think it is clear that there's a lot of misunderstanding going on in our gospel reading and in the part of Matthew leading up to it. And a long list of failed expectations on the part of those who were listening to Jesus's message. Jesus's comment about the children saying, we played the flute and you refused to dance and we wailed and you refused to mourn. It seems a little odd because we just kind of get that right out of the gate and we don't have the lead in to his comment. So if you have your Bibles, you know, at some point, feel free to check out chapter 11 of Matthew and you'll see what I'm talking about. He's talking about these expectations because earlier in the chapter, John the Baptist is in prison. And he sends his messengers to Jesus asking if he is the Messiah. He said, are you the one that we expected? And first, Jesus says, first, he says, first off, if you really want to understand me and know who I am, look at what I'm doing. Healing, teaching, raising people from the dead, all this stuff will tell you who I am. And then he starts talking to the crowds about the expectations, the expectations they had about John the Baptist and the expectations they have about him. And if I had to boil it down to a sentence, I think it would be that he basically says everyone's a critic, right? Everyone's a critic. 
there will always be people who misunderstand you and everyone always brings their own expectations into a situation. And when the reality doesn't turn out to match, not everyone can adjust. Some people think everybody should be happy, so they play a dance tune. Other people think everyone should be serious and somber, so they wail a funeral song. But people don't always follow suit, right? Critics of John the Baptist said he was too critical, too harsh, too austere, and maybe he should have danced a little. Critics of Jesus said he was a glutton, he liked to party, he hung out with the wrong crowd, and he should, really should have shaped up. Yet, as Jesus says, wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. In other words, if you really want to know God's way, don't focus on your own expectations. Focus on what happens when people follow God's ways. And when people follow God's ways, wonderful things can happen. And by wonderful things, I don't mean going to heaven, being saved, any of that, because all of that happens because Jesus died and rose for us to bring us salvation as a free gift. What I'm talking about here and what I think Matthew was talking about is how we live in the meantime. Following God's ways benefits everyone. It is a way of life that lifts everyone up and a way that is rooted and grounded in God's love for you. It is the way of life that Jesus moves on to discuss in the last part of our gospel reading. And he uses the words that are so utterly and completely good news for us all. Come to me. All you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are there any words we need to hear more than that right now? Is there anyone among us who does not feel the heaviness of the world right now weighing us down? Even as we search for ways to hang on to what makes us human, you don't have to look far to find something heavy lurking around the corner. To hear Jesus promise a way to lighten these loads, it is news so good, we wonder if it can really be true. Now, when we are feeling so weighed down, our human tendency is to call up other people and put our burdens onto them, make them do the work for us. And we think that that is the way to lighten our burdens, to lighten our own burdens. But that's not the case. And maybe, maybe you have done that. I'm sure I have done that. <laughs> maybe you have experienced someone doing it to you or trying to do it to you, trying to put their burdens on you. It's a vicious cycle where people end up, can end up crumbling under the weight of the expectations of others, and nobody is ever set free. We do all have something to bear, something to carry, some type of work to do in our lives. But that something is given to us not by another human being, but by God. And while it is still definitely work, it is not and should not be soul crushing. Jesus is trying to show us that the way to lighten our load and make it bearable is to find the right yoke. The yoke that fits you the best. The yoke that has been carefully smoothed and prepared. The yoke that is just right. This is the yoke of following Christ. You may have seen the photo of the yoke that was in the kids' message, the same photo that was on the cover slide of this worship service, and noticed that in that yoke, there's two spots for farm animals to be yoked. Sometimes we think about this yoke just being for one person, just as another way to carry more, but I don't think that's what Jesus is saying here. It's not about carrying more. 
It's about who is yoked with you. And if you are a follower of Jesus, then he is the one beside you in the yoke. Consider it a much needed revision of the leader and follower model, right? Where one's in front and one is behind. Jesus can teach us much more if we are walking alongside him, yoked with him, feeling his strength and his purpose and his power fill us and flow through us. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a way of life that is not easy. Because when you're in a yoke, you can't just go off wherever you want to go or go at your own pace or give up. And yet, ironically enough, it is a way of life that creates ease, lightness, liberation, and rest. Sweet, blessed rest. Because we are not doing this work alone. None of us are. Whether you plan to be back in the pew next Sunday at St. Peter's, or whether you plan to worship from your couch with a cup of coffee watching these videos, you are not alone. The yoke of Jesus connects us in ways that we can't even comprehend. We are not called to carry the burdens of others, but we are called to walk alongside them anyway. So take a moment right now and take a deep breath. Breathe in the sweetness of the oxygen, fill your lungs with that precious gift and release it. And with that, release all the burdens that you are dragging behind you just for a moment. They will be waiting for you. But for now, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we move to the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you now to share the peace in the chat window or the comments. Share peace with those in your home. Send a text or an email to someone or share on social media a word of Christ's peace. Peace be to everyone commenting on YouTube and Facebook. Peace be to all of you today. We continue now with the prayers. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us take a moment and pray for our shared world. We pray for the church around the globe where people of faith assemble for worship, protect them from viral infection, where they worship with print and screen, grant them steadfastness in your word. Strengthen those believers who may doubt your goodness. Embra embrace us as we struggle, struggle to find our common ground and lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Grant renewal to the air, the waters, and the lands. Nourish our nation's green spaces. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations and especially for our own nation on this 4th of July weekend. Help our country live up to its highest ideals of liberty and justice for all. Keep the, wor the world from war and pave the way for just elections. Uphold our, our courts, guide our national and state governments 
in finding ways to redress ancient wrongs and to ensure equality for all. Free us from a closed mindset that hinders relationship building and lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need and for all who are sick and suffering. Heal those afflicted with COVID-19 and guide researchers in discovering a vaccine. We pray for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed, especially those who need healing. Jim, David, Lorraine, Matthew, Connie, Christy, Betty, Melanie, Amy, Barb, and Julie. We pray for those seeking peace and comfort, the family and friends of Bob Zeller and Dutch Regner. We pray for those who are fighting COVID-19, Mary and Sue, Levita and Ralph. We pray for those who are fighting cancer, Tony, Mary, Dawn, Emma, Sandy, Mike and Rebecca. We pray for Brent and John and all law enforcement officers to be safe from physical danger. We pray for those crying out for change in our country, that they might be safe and that their voices might be heard. We pray for new beginnings, for families preparing for new babies, Allie and Zach and Nat and Brooke, and for couples preparing to be married. And we pray for those who need strength and guidance, Christopher, Andrea and Craig. And Lord, we pray for all those that we name before you now. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for infants and young children that they would be tended with care. We pray for teens that they might keep patience and have hope. We pray for school boards as they work to find solutions for the fall semester. We pray for the unemployed that they would find jobs. We pray for medical workers that they might remain healthy. We pray for the aged especially those in care facilities, that they might confine companionship in your presence. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith, especially Dutch and Bob. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, this is the point in the service when we would normally share the meal of Holy Communion, a meal of Christ's victory over death, a meal that brings us forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation through the presence of Jesus. Now, of course, these things come to us in many ways. They don't only come through an embodied way like communion, but they come through us to us through many different ways. So therefore, I invite you now to pray with me this prayer of spiritual communion and the gifts of God using the words that you now see on your screen. Jesus, I want to receive you, and I cannot do it in the sacramental way. Therefore, I ask you to come to me and fill me with your presence, your peace, and your love. Grant me, Lord, the graces I need most, and make me one with all your faithful people everywhere. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the creator, 
Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is This Is My Song, and Anthony will be leading us in singing. Thank you, Anthony, and thank you all for joining us this morning. Please be well and safe and enjoy your holiday weekend. Thank you to everyone who helped to lead worship today. Anthony Dangler, Scott Stewart, and Russ Brookins. If you are a member or a friend of St. Peter's, you will be receiving a letter. You may have already gotten it, but, but you either will be receiving or have already gotten a letter with details about worship in the month of July and specifically about the guidelines for returning to in-person worship. So if you haven't gotten that yet, just keep an eye out for it. Um, we are going to begin to do that again, but don't worry, we will continue to offer these worship services online. So if that is the, the, the place where you want are going to be worshiping, then we will be here for you. If you were spiritually fed by today's worship experience, please consider doing two things. First of all, you can respond to God's gift with a gift of your own. If you already have a church home that you support, I invite you to make a donation there this morning. And if you don't, and you'd like to be part of what we're doing at St. Peter's, just click the donate button at the bottom of our website. 
Thank you to everyone who has done that. Thank you also to all of you who have continued faithfully to send in your donations and pledges. We are so grateful for all of you. The other thing you can do is you can connect with us. We would love to hear from you. You can like us and follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and check out our website, stpetersverona.org, and let us know how you liked this service. And now, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.